Hey guys, this is going to be my League Start Guide for Lightning Strike, either Slayer or Warden. I'll go over the pros and cons of both. I'm not sure which one I'm starting, but I'm personally leaning towards Slayer. But yeah, I've been working on POVs for non-stop hours for the past week, trying to get both of these to the best I can. And I'll share both of them down below, and you can make a decision yourself of which one you want to play. So yeah, I made this character in standard real quick, just to show some gameplay, as I can't really show any Warden gameplay, and I didn't feel like setting up a Slayer character. So yeah, it's very, very scuffed character. Like I have no abyss socket. All my gems are on field. No annoying. I'm using just a plus one tabular, which is nothing. So my attack skill, it's just a tabular for a six link. Cause I don't want to buy a six link. No Eldritch implicits anywhere. You know, no boots, helmet, right? Like very scuffed character. If you're wondering how bad this character is, it's roughly 40 to 50% of the damage. That I'm going to have day one on the next patch in my POB. So yeah, it's a very, very weak character. Just keep that in mind. And we're going to be doing an eight mod map with a character that's actually this bad. Of course, it does actually have a taming, which is decent, but it's not the buff taming. So it's actually not that special. So yeah, we'll do a quick Legion boss. This is just some gameplay footage. I only put this character together just to show you some footage. But yeah, keep in mind, this character is very weak, but yet it's still highly efficient at clearing maps. So also Valos is very, very nice for Legion. This price, uh, put both of them down. It'll help you clear the Legion a lot faster. Yeah, very good at clearing Legion, very good at clearing any type of content in the game. Besides like Uber bosses, I wouldn't make this character one from Ubers. It's just a map blaster. Yeah, as you can see, very, very good at doing Legion. We felt just kind of scuffed, but whatever. We'll do one more Legion, then clear the map boss then talk about the character so yeah, ideally how you want to play this in a legion pop both your battle s on the one side and then you run to the other side and you can kind of clear up both sides at the same time of course if you miss on a monster classic legion you now have to wait the timer because you can't find it oh there it is but as you can see the damage is very very high and like i said this is half the damage I'm gonna have on day one. This character is extremely scuffed. I just put it together just so I could give you guys some gameplay of what, you know, what Lannister looks like. The boss damage, you know, no issue, whatever, right? Once again, half the damage I'm gonna have on day one. Extremely scuffed character. I'm playing Dead Eye because I can't really showcase Warden. But yeah. Let's go over the character now, Slayer, Warden, all that. So first, let's talk about Slayer versus Warden versus Deadeye, mostly Slayer versus Warden, the pros and cons. So what is the pros of Slayer? The so Slayer roughly has the same DPS, it is lower, it's around 10 to 15% less DPS, but there's only one conditional damage on Slayer, and that is if you killed recently. Well, Warden, you'll see, has a lot of conditionals and only has this very high DPS when all of the conditionals are up. So keep that in mind. Slayer DPS is extremely consistent, while Warden has very like highs and lows. Slayer is a lot tankier, so at during charges will rework this patch, which means Slayer, the CDC that can get a lot of endurance charges through frenzy stacking, is now going to be a lot tankier this patch. So it's very, very tanky. If you want to play a tanky ascendancy, play Slayer. Um, insane recovery of battle pack on line of strike. I'll explain this uh, interaction later. Scales very well, plus one frenzy. Just also mentioned because of the whole masterful form that Slayer gets. I Means stacking frenzies is both an insane power boost and defensive boost. The anoint slots are more flexible. I'll go over this during the warden POB. But yeah, the warden POB, the anoint is pretty much slotted in you can't really change it which kind of sucks as there is some nice quality of life annoyance you can actually take on this build pretty much plays the same as warden but less buttons and conditionals so warden does have one extra button even two if you want to go tinctures so having less buttons is always nice you can also ignore more map mods especially when you get rattle cash so by default slayer is fizz effect immune so despite being an ellie claw you still can't do fizz effect maps because yes, this is enough fizz damage just to kill you. So if you do play Warden, you have to roll over a fizz reflect while Slayer can do it. Because Slayer does have this keystone, um, ascendancy node, I mean, that just makes him immune to physical reflect, which is pretty nice. 
And then when you get Rally Catch, you can ignore uh, monster steel charges and cannot gain charges. These map mods are usually pretty bad at lowering damage by quite a bit. Even though they are doable, it's nice that you can completely ignore them. All right, so those are the benefits of Slayer. What's the benefit of Warden? So Warden will have more damage, but it is entirely conditional. So if we go over how Warden looks, just to explain it real quick. So Warden has three conditionals. One is Scorch Stacks, how much are you scorching for? Other is Avatar of the Wilds. So this gives you a skill called Unbound Avatar Skill. And essentially how this works, a TLDR is once every, well, every six to seven seconds, you could activate this skill to gain 10 seconds of 80% more elemental damage, roughly a 60 to 65% damage uptime if you're constantly attacking. I think in a normal map and scenario, it's probably like a 50% downtime, maybe like 10 seconds up, 10 seconds down, 80% more damage, which is still very, very strong as that's around a 40% more damage you know, multiplier. And then Oath of Spring, which is the biggest conditional here. So you can apply up to 50 shock stacks and a singular shock stack lasts for two seconds. So to apply 50, you have to attack very, very fast. And you have to be attacking consistently, right? If you stop attacking for one second, then half your shock stacks are probably falling off. So yeah, three conditionals, but they're all very, very, very strong in their own right. So another big pro of Warden is having permanent freeze. So I think just Oath of Winter might be one of the best essence you notes know, in the game for a softcore. Having this perma freeze is absolutely insane, especially if you know how much it, it takes to actually freeze enemies. It's not too much when you start stacking up like 200 to 40 percent increased freeze duration, which is what Oath of Winter essentially does. You can perma freeze literally anything, um, even bosses. So bosses won't be frozen. They'll have the status element as frozen, but they'll only get a 15, uh, 50 percent. Uh, action speed reduction, which is still very, very strong. If you ever done a boss with 50% reduced action speed before, you know how easy it becomes. So yeah, Oath of Winter is extremely, extremely strong, and it's the biggest reason why I would want to play Warden is for this notable right here. So another upside is possibly really good at OP tinctures. We don't really know all the tinctures yet. We know it's like a rage one, made as a projectile one. We don't really know. So there's definitely a possibility for tinctures to be absolutely broken, but the downside of that is that tinctures are going to be annoying to use as you have to manually use them. There's no way to automate tinctures in the next patch. You have to press it every like 15 to 18 seconds or something like that, which is going to be annoying. And also it's going to mean it's not like a hundred percent uptime unless you're constantly spamming them because you're probably not going to use them as soon as they come off the cooldown unless you're paying very close attention. But you know, even then, right? So keep that in mind that tinctures might be pretty annoying to use, even if they are very strong. I think the last upside of Warden is that, you know, if you don't like Lantern Strike, if you want to play something different, you can always swap the bows. Like I have the full Dead Eye Bow Guide out, and yeah, bows are very, very strong. So it is an upside to Warden is that, hey, you can just swap two bows. If you don't like the skill or, you're, you know, you don't like Warden that much, just swap two Dead Eye Bows. So I also have Deadeye here, even though I'm not doing Deadeye in this guide. I just want to show the pros of Deadeye. So the pros of Deadeye is it's the best for Land Strike of Arkin. Land Strike of Arkin is the one that changed nine times. I mean, it's the best for map clear, but the lowest DPS out of all three as the Deadeye, especially on this skill, really doesn't give any damage. You only get damage from Gathering Winds and Focal Point as Ricochet and Alice Munitions gives the skill zero damage, just more quality of life for clearing. So yeah. Low damage ascendancy, but high quality of life. I would say it's the best tier 16 farmer of all three of these. But if you want to push into tier 17s early or you want to do some more higher end bosses, then it's going to be the weakest for that. As tier 17s do require quite a bit of damage, even with the nerfs they are receiving. You know, it's personally why I'm considering a Warner and Slayer is because I want to do tier 17s as soon as possible, because that is where the best farms are going to be. Where Deadeye is going to take a little bit longer to push into that tier 17s, which is why I'm personally not playing Deadeye. So yeah, those are the pros and cons. Hopefully that helps you make up your mind at which we want to play. Now I'm also going to both builds just a little bit. So let's start with Slayer. Yeah, as I said before, what makes Slayer so strong this patch is the Endurance Charge change. So Endurance Charges this patch give you 4% LE mitigation and 4% Fizz mitigation, where before they only get 4% of Fizz mitigation. So they essentially 
double the value of endurance charges as now giving both Fizz and Ellie, which is making them extremely strong from a defensive standpoint. All the benefits of Slayer is that you have Overleech. Overleech is also extremely strong. It's pretty much like impossible to die to dots in this game with Overleech as you're pretty much going to leech more than any dot in the entire game. So very, very strong. If you like don't like dealing with Cross of Blood, don't like dealing with Poison, Overleech essentially solves all that with you know, no downside. Now the other huge benefit of Slayer is Valpak. So if you're unaware, Valpak has been reworked this patch and it's extremely strong with Lightning Strike. Very, very strong. So it now reads Life Leech for melee damage is instant and cannot recover life other than Leech. So you might be thinking, okay, so your Leech is instant, so now your Overleech doesn't work. But this is wrong because Lightning Strike is both a melee hit and a projectile range hit. So the projectile range hit leeches as normal because it's not melee damage, therefore it's not an instant leech and you can still recover from other sources of leech. So when you hit with the range hit, you still get over leech and when you hit with the melee hit, it's instant leech. And as you can see here, the instant leech is essentially 8,000 per second. It's twice your health pool pretty much. So you're gonna have 8,000 life per second along with over 800 leech per second or over leech, meaning it's pretty much impossible to die unless you get one hit, which is possible, right? But yeah, it's gonna make it very hard to die from multiple hits in a row as you're instantly leeching back up to full with that over leech as well. The Val pack is extremely, extremely strong with Slayer and Lightning Strike more specifically. It's a big reason why I wanna play Slayer. This right here is a massive, EHP boost, massive defensive boost that like won't show on POB. You know, instantly recovering your life to full on every single hit is, you, know, you can't really value how much EHP that's actually given you because essentially this means you can only die if you do get one hit with this uh, amount of instant leech and over leech. Yeah, that's the biggest benefits of Slayer here. Um, let me go to a day one POB just to show you the damage. Yeah, the day one POB is 8 million, uh, DPS and a range hit, and then a range and melee. It's a roughly 13 million total. And the gear here is pretty modest. So it's a triple LA claw, only 500 LA DPS. It's three tier threes with crafted crit. This is not too bad at all. This might cost you know, one to three divines day one. If you can make it yourself, maybe one, two divines. It's like I said, it's not that bad. And this is the most expensive piece in this whole POB. Like Kosadai. So I'm using this shield day one. I think it's very, very strong day one as just completely solves your accuracy without how to deal with it at all. So if you don't use this, um, there's other options. You can use Hinder Chorus Lock if it's cheaper. So, or Hinder Chorus Sight, my bad. It gives a thousand accuracy. This will also completely solve your accuracy unless you take one accuracy wheel on the tree. So, Use another way, although this one's a lot weaker, as I think your Agamemnon slot's a lot more valuable than your Shield slot. You can also use Hyrie's Truth, even if you're not a bow build. Still good. You won't have the coal, but it gives you a lot of accuracy with a level 30 precision. You can get accuracy rolled on three pieces, and then also take the accuracy wheel, but I just think it's not worth it, or just using uh, Lycos today, because that's a lot of opportunity costs. Getting three high accuracy rolls on rare gear day one is like, yeah, it's doable, but at the same time, I think it's also just kind of like unrealistic over just buying a shield and just worrying about accuracy later. You know, as soon as you get this shield, you can just trench it in the crit with absolutely zero issues. So yeah, I would highly recommend the shield or Harry's Truth or Hino Chorus Sight. I think all three of these options are valid. Just go with whichever one is cheaper. I would say Hidden Core Sight or Lycos today because how you shoot this out of downside where you might have to drop like an aura. So yeah, that's how you solve accuracy issues on day one and allows you to easily go crit. I started that, it's a level 94 tree. And like I said, 13 million DPS, a ba basic gear. This gear's not even fully finished by the way. I'll probably fully finish this uh, before launch just so you know, hey, what stats do you want? What impulses do you want? I just lose together to see, okay, how strong is the new London Strike? And the answer is very, very strong. The skill is definitely extremely high damage. Yeah, as you see, just basic gear. And also where you're getting your rage is when you'll put it on your gloves. I do believe this is staying. 
it's probably changing how it's worded but yeah it will still work in the next patch you need implicit rage on your gloves until you get a lethal pride that gives you rage so later on we are going to use a lethal pride and lethal pride now gives rage a melee hit on one of the notables so it'll be pretty easy and cheap to get and yeah that's about it uh taman the new taman is extremely extremely strong i might even use two of these i just put one up pub for now this might be like anywhere from like one to two divines it's not too rare it's from two tier four rarity rings and one tier three rarity rings if you're not sure what that means essentially it really shouldn't be more than one divine at most so it's keep that in mind and then dark ray vectors they just like you know five c boots they wanted is so so cheap and pretty effective you will swap two normal rare boots later on the reason why i'm not using rare boots right off the bat is because you want action speed on your boots and until you get action speed dark ray vectors are quite a bit more dps and for skills, um, we're going to have Trading, Nightblade, Multi-Strike, Inspiration, Lightning Strike, and Return Projectiles. Now, never replace Return Projectiles on this build, and never replace Inspiration, and Multi-Strike, and Nightblade. Trinity is pretty much the only flex slot at this point. All these are needed to make the build and skill feel really good. Inspiration is needed for mana cost. If you can solve your mana cost another way, then sure, you can take it off. Return of Projectiles is a massive damage multiplier. And it feels very good for clearing. The multi strike also just makes this melee skill feel very, very good. The night blade this is the whole reason why we play claws in the first place. So I mean, yeah, also gives you elusive, which is another defensive layer. Outside of that, uh, it's very important to always have plus one strike skill on your mastery. So at a base value, lightning strike does fire for projectiles. Then with this mastery, you can five. And five projectiles does feel pretty good and later on it'll be seven once you get a dying sun so yeah that's pretty much about it for this day one slayer pob we'll go over to the end game slayer pob real quick so the end game slayer pob which is this is what i'm expecting to have day two to day three like i said i play a lot don't expect to have this as much you know the same day as me if you're not playing all day like me even then this character is not too expensive this is just a 800 ldps claw i believe it's tier one tier two tier two with crafted crit and attack speed which is actually not too bad it's probably like a 10 or 15 divine claw which is i'm gonna say pretty cheap for how much damage we are getting also a lot of the shield um gear is kind of like mediocre some it's pretty good i just put gear in here once again just, just to get like a rough estimate of how powerful my character is going to be so in this example, the shield's completely shit. Once again, I'll fill out these POBs before launch just so you know what stats to get. But I just put the random stats in just to see, hey, where is this character sitting at when I have this much, you know, currency to spend on it. And plus is on a helmet's very important. Reduce mana cost, mana reservation. Uh, chest as well. Implicits, these are our most awesome implicits, but you can get whatever. So these are gloves that give you fortify, and this is how you solve fortify in the build. Now, you don't technically need Fortify. You can definitely play without Fortify. These are very, very, very nice. I would highly recommend it. But once again, it's not needed. If you don't use these gloves, you want to use rare gloves, then make sure you get rare gloves with a double implicit for Pierce and melee uh, strike, plus one melee strike. It would be a lot better clear speed than using these. So if you're doing tier 16 content, I would say don't even get these and just get plus one pierce and plus one strike low. So it'll actually give you way better clear. Um, and then yeah, regular boots. How we're selling ailment, by the way, is avoid ailments on boots with ancestral vision. And that's it. Along with your spell suppress cap, you will we'll have 100% avoidance to all elements. Taman, yoke. So yoke is how you really push this build to max one damage. Now, without yoke, you're at 40 million DPS. And with Yoke, you're at 65 million, so it's giving you over 50% damage. It is pretty expensive early on. It's probably like 20 plus divines, but you know, build completely works without it, right? And it's, it might be cheaper this league as tier 17s are going to be easier to, to enter. So it might not be as expensive as it was last league. But even so, build works without those amulet. It's just very, very strong, and you do want to get it. Came in, ring, ring, and a rare belt. Side chain vise is obviously, of course, optimal. I just was kind of putting like whatever I could in my belt slot. That's for jewels, interrogation. So interrogation is because it combos really strong with the new Taman, which is elemental damage per an ailment, and it combos really well with yoke, which is an increased damage for each type of ailment you have inflicted on an enemy. So yeah, 
I just want to use interrogation. Also caps your crit. Also gives you some defense and sap. Very, very strong. Would highly recommend. My end game version is actually going to drop interrogation just so I can get my freeze back. But I think for like the early to mid game, interrogation is very, very, very strong. Then lethal pride and assist vision, which I already went over. And the rare jewels are just crit multi and flat damage. You can also get life instead of like crit multi. And the cluster jewels real quick are just Feed the Fury, Martial Prowlers, and Field of Fight. Um, the only combo you really, really need is Martial Prowlers and Feed the Fury. The last one can be whatever. You can also drop a Martial Prowlers and just get Feed the Fury and Field the Fight if you get like accuracy somewhere in your gear. Only take in Martial Prowlers and it does give a little bit of accuracy as well. One other thing to note real quick is that this new Bleed Wheel is insanely strong and I highly recommend it. Everyone to take it. So you might be wondering, okay, how do we proc bleed so this gives 20 percent chance to bleed from these small nodes and since we are a elemental tri build we still are using that weapon that does physical damage so despite scaling zero fizz damage we still have a 20 percent chance to bleed on every single hit because we're not fully converted and 20 percent chance to hit for bleed is more than enough when you're attacking 10 times per second so yeah this wheel every attack based build should be taken if you are doing some form of physical damage, even just a little bit. It's very, very strong as it gives an insane amount of crit chance and insane amount of multi for three points. Now as for gems, we are using Dark Marionettes in the end game version. Now, if you don't know how these work, essentially you only have to raise your specter once and that's it. And then you only have to press your anger when they die. Personally, you just put them at the start of the map and press them at the boss if you need to. I wouldn't worry about min-maxing them. Press them before the boss at most just to have that extra damage. Assassin's Mark setup. Uh, automation Steel Skin. There's also Molten Shell if you want to also use Dirt Termination over Wrath, some more defensive over damage. So this is one option right here. Instead of Wrath, you can use D-Term, then get Hybrid Gear, use a Granite Flask, and have a more balanced evasion and armor to be more tanky. Personally, I'm just going full damage at the start. If I feel like I need more defense, then I'll start, you know, adding that defense onto my character. We're on blades with fetch attacks and endurance cry. So we have one thing I forgot to mention. So yeah, we're getting endurance charges through this notable right here, which gives endurance charge on kill. And for bosses, we're just using endurance cry to keep them up. So you're not really using endurance cry to our map in. You're just going to rely entirely on endurance charge on kill. Now this will be solved late game where you want to press it all when we actually use Rallocash and it's simply Rallocash in this POB as I do expect them to be quite expensive. And Frenzies, we have Frenzies on kill, we have Blood Rage, and we have Chance to gain Frenzy when we hit Marked Enemy. So no matter what we're doing, we're always going to have Cap Frenzies hitting the boss, killing trash, whatever. And Power Chargers is just from Assassin's Mark. So yeah, that's how we're getting all three charges in this build. Skitterbots are very important when you go yoke and Seekers of Suffering. Before then, you never use Skitterbots. Yeah, I think that's about it. I hope I explained this character well enough. If you do have any questions about this character, leave a comment below for the Slayer. Now, we'll quickly go over the Warden, so hopefully the video is not too, too long. So yeah, Warden, um, if you want to see the League Start. So Warden League Start has 17 million DPS, which is, you know, 4 million more than the Slayer. But like I said, it's Conditionals on top of Conditionals. And it's also like the exact same gear loadout. So this is 17 million if you have 50 shock stacks, if you have 20 scourge, and if you have unbound up. If unbound's off, you can already see at 9.6 million. And if you only have 30 shock stacks, which 30 is definitely 100% realistic, you're at 7.8 million. 20 scourge, you should be somewhere around between 15 and 20 scourge day one. Pretty easy to get. We got 7.1 million. So you can see how like how drastic the DPS of this essentially falls because of all the conditionals. But once you have everything up, if you're able to attack for like two seconds straight. You are very, very high damage and you are freezing everything in the game. So yeah, do you keep that in mind? So I'll put it back at the 50 and put this back up to 20 with Unbound on. Yeah, trees also pretty much very identical, especially when you talk to clusters. Um, there's not much you can do with the tree. Just standard, essentially a lightning strike tree. Make sure you take this new wheel for mana reservation and reduce mana cost attacks. This is how you solve mana cost in the new patch as an attack based build as all the mana costs of attacks were increased. Besides that, same gear as the Slayer D, uh, Day 1 POB. Now, one thing I want to mention before I move on to the last POB is return projectiles. I get this question quite a bit. You know, how is return projectiles 20% more damage? Uh, what is the mechanics of Lightning Strike and all that? 
If you've seen any Lion Strike video before, you know, Lion Strike double hit. How does this work? So I'm not going to do any like post edit and whatever. I'm just going to try to explain it and hopefully you understand. So how Lion Strike works, as long as you have a plus one strike, so in this case from the attack mastery, non val strike skills target one original enemy, you can double hit with this skill, meaning you get one projectile hit and one melee hit. So how this works is, you have to be a certain distance from the enemy. So pretend this totem is an enemy. You have to be a roughly around here to get like the double hit. And it's a very small range you have. So it's like from here to maybe like here to maybe like here, right? But it's very, very strong as it doubles your damage essentially. Now, the reason why this return projectiles is 70% more damage is because both your projectile that you're shooting and your strike skill that also shoots a projectile, they both come back. Meaning you're gonna have two projectiles that come back for 39% of their original damage, you know, giving you 70% more projectile damage. So yeah, hopefully that explains it, um, how the double hit works and how return projectiles is 70% more damage. Now keep in mind, 70% more damage is the same as any other support gem. It's the same as elemental damage with attack skills. Um, because this will affect both the melee hit and the projectile hit, while return projectiles only affects the projectile. So yeah, like, don't focus too hard on the return projectiles. You, I'm just putting this in the same percent more damage because POB doesn't calculate it um, by itself. You know, if you click this on and off, it's the same DPS. So yeah, that's the math behind it. That's how double hidden works, and essentially quadruple hidden works as well. This also means, keep this in mind, when you get... Uh, return projectiles, let's say the next league can get return prod on the claw. This is not confirmed yet, but it are enchantments and there is return projectiles pretty similar to Vengeance Cascade or Nimis. So anyway, that's the whole Lightning Strike POB. Um, I'll just show this endgame real quick. I don't want to go on for too long. The video is probably like already too long, but so endgame POB, only one cluster set up, Message of Hope. Uh, nothing really else different. We're using Doppelganger guys in this POB on the Warden POB. You solve both physical and chaos hits. With Slayer, you get a Durance charge that solves your physical hits. But as Warden, you don't really have a good option. And I felt like Doppelganger was the only good option. You don't have to use this. But if you don't use it, um, your damage is, well, physical max hit is way less. So I would recommend it if you feel like you're dying a bit. If you feel like you're not dying and you don't use it, just use a rare chest instead. Like I said, like all basic gear. I felt these POBs before League Start. But yeah, this is just a POB that I want to just have as a template. And yeah, that's pretty much about it for both Warden and Slayer. Um, probably been rambling for quite a bit. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Of course, I'll try answering or just join my stream as I am streaming daily. And of course, I am going to be streaming League Start. Hopefully, this explains everything. I think it's going to be a very, very strong build. It's going to be one of the best map blasters this league because it's very high damage and very high defense as well, which I think is going to matter when we have tier 17s with Delirium, Wisp, Beyond, and all of that. So yeah, that's about it.